Hi, I'm Madonna from New Leaf Natural Therapies and this is Joy and this is part two of our little balance we've been doing today. Obviously I've been doing a little bit of massage since I saw you last. We decided that should be private and now we're going to um, basically keep doing some work on the shoulders but also what I found at the end of the balance with Joy was that there was some stress associated with the whole thing with the shoulders being so tight because um, quite often these little muscles they get too tight it brings the shoulders in ready for fight and flight so what we need to do is firstly I'm going to check this little muscle in here it's called the pec major no it's not it's called the pec minor pectoralis minor so I'm pushing it down towards the table hold the arm up joy okay so that's not working which means it doesn't want to be stretched it wants to stay tight it's trying to protect her now once again I'm going to stretch this one towards the table and hold the arm up okay so neither of them are locking as well as they should which means they are not working properly they're too tight they're trying to protect the body and breathe in breathe out and lift your shoulder towards my hand and breathe in and relax breathe out and lift and breathe in and relax breathe out and lift beautiful and this side I'm pushing it towards the table breathe in breathe out and lift breathe in breathe out and lift breathe in breathe out and lift fabulous so now I'm going to see if that's reset it's called a hypertonics test so I'm pushing this shoulder down towards the table and hold and that's now locking pushing this one towards the table and hold lovely now there were several things that happened on the day when this pain started so we'll just ask the body to go back to the type of stress that was involved on the day so that we can start dealing with that whole emotional combination of things firstly I'm going to pull on the big toe hold the arm up for me joy okay and hold up for me okay big toes are all about stress about fight and flight so the body's running yeah so the body's running on fight and flight energy so we're going to do a reset on these little guys breathe in breathe out and push towards me and breathe in and relax breathe out and push and breathe in breathe out and push beautiful let's see if that's reset and hold and hold lovely now let's see what survival patterns are there hold that's survival switching that's okay and hold that's deep survival switching and hold and that's hidden deep survival okay so what I need to do is find out where in the brain this little stress pattern is stored so is it in the EMC MMC right so it's in the part of the brain called the periventricular survival system which is a uh, system in the body around the ventricles that holds stress patterns to do with your senses so whatever was going on on this day it got to the point where the body didn't want to hear one more thing see one more thing do one more thing have to make one more decision too much had been done the senses just threw up their hands and said no more so okay so basically I've got a chart of the periventricular survival system the first little area showing, so this is just giving me yes no answers, my little skippy arm over here. The first area showing up is called the anterior cingulate gyrus. So I'm putting in the coordinates for that, which are a combination of acupuncture points, and hold out for me, don't let me push together. Okay, they're unlocking. <laughs> the anterior cingulate gyrus is about moral evaluations in our life when our brain is constantly trying to sort out what's true what's correct what's appropriate and it's about the social expression of our stress so how are we coping in a social environment under stress some of us cope well some of us don't some of us shovel our emotional gear underneath the rug others let it out and can't hold it in and there's a whole bunch of genetic connections with how we cope with stress. Who are you more like when you're stressed, your mum or your dad? Or grandma, granddad? Or 
swearing like grandma. Uh -huh, swearing like grandma. <laughs> and again, hold out. So now that's locking. So the next little part of the brain showing up is called the subclossal gyrus. That is a part of the brain that in this context is to do with how we cope with anger. Yeah, right. And it's, um, it's linked in with um, rage, anger, frustration. So we need to, so these little points down through here, they access a part of the brain called the amygdala. There's five major points that I check there and then I just wait until they pulse nicely. Sometimes they start pulsing and they're pulsing really crazily and I just wait till it calms down. Other times they're not pulsing at all and I wait until they pulse at all. But this one's actually quite full of adrenaline so I'm just trying to wait till it settles a little bit. So whatever happened on the day, there was a lot of frustration with it. <laughs> now let's check in those coordinates again. And again, hold out, beautiful. Now the next, next little nuclei is called the orbitofrontal cortex. Hold out, okay, that's not locking very well. These last two areas also have up to seven generations of how we cope with stress as well. My generations or my back family? Um, you going back seven generations. And it can be on your mother's side or you dad's side and then it can be through their genetic lines as well so the theory at the moment is that because stress is something that we need to we need to be able to just react when stress happens in our world so therefore if we've got a genetic ability to deal with stress then we're more likely to survive but a lot of you know that's seven generations it's like up to 150 years or more so you know the world was a very different place 150 That's years ago. Tough bastards. <laughs> so this little area that just showed up was the orbitofrontal cortex, and that is an area to do with when you just can't get stuff out of your head, when it goes round and around and around and around, and hold out. And you don't sleep. And you don't sleep. So just checking those little areas again, they're perfect. Okay. Next little area showing up is the reticular activating system. This is also involved in lack of sleep. So putting in the coordinates for the reticular activating system. Okay, so whatever it was activated your noradrenaline. So the big toe muscle, that was all about adrenaline. That's short-term stress. That's about the tiger in the room that's about to eat you. So it's to give you the oomph and energy so you can fight but noradrenaline's long-term stress. Your body's assumed that life is never going to get easy again. There's a family of tigers around the corners that are gonna be eyeing you off every time you go out. Okay, and that's creating some vigilance in the nervous system. So the nervous system is just waiting for the next thing to go wrong. Did sort of feel a bit like that that day. <laughs> some days, the hits just keep on coming. Uh, RAS. Quite often there's more than one RAS circuit. Okay, there is a second one. So serotonin's also low. I wonder if you'd do well on melatonin. Anyway, I might have a think about that with you. So serotonin is a calming, nurturing hormone. And when we have lots of serotonin whizzing through the body, it converts into melatonin when the sun goes down and melatonin helps us sleep. But there's a whole pathway going from serotonin to mel melatonin. The, the more inflamed we are or stressed we are, the less we can convert serotonin to melatonin and back again. And I know you've always been a night owl, but... Nonetheless, that serotonin also creating vigilance in the nervous system. Okay. So double checking, no, that's cool. So there's no more RAS circuitry showing up. Okay, so nothing else is showing up with the periventricular survival system. Let's just double check that deep hidden survival pattern and hold, that's fine. Did that hurt less than before? Still hurt. Still hurt. 
But less than before or the same? It's too far back to me. Okay, that's all right, and hold. Okay, so they're now locking. So what we've done is stacked in the shoulder muscles, the pec minors, we've settled down the adrenaline, we've settled down the noradrenaline, we've cleared this layer of the periventricular survival system. And so thank you, Joy.